Duncan and Maxine Campbell farm Barwon Lee, a 2,000 hectare property just south of Inverlee. Duncan is the fifth generation of his family to farm the property, which has a long history of running fine wool merinos. They first became aware of serrated tussock on their property through a visit from the then Department of Primary Industries. Duncan and I became aware of the serrated tussock probably around 1994. Um, when we had a visit from a, one of the department people um, and at that stage we really had to be taught what it was. It could have been here in the sort of uh, 1980 uh, early and we sort of thought it was just another form of uh, silver tussock that uh, I <coughs> was always growing up with. And then slowly it became more and more and more and we saw the, the different colour and the seed start, a head starting to appear and obviously there was a big difference between the silver tussock and the serrated tussock. The sort of country we were working with initially was uh, stony country that you virtually could only ride a horse round. Even though there was very little information available at this time but we were told that burning would actually kill the seed in the top two centimetres of the ground because we knew that burning wouldn't kill it so we were just literally trying to get rid, rid of the seed bank and especially when the tussock was in flower I mean it was a really good strategy then it just held it for held the areas that we were looking at um, for a little bit longer until we could get to them in some but other way. We were also doing a lot of um, spraying for seed set and that was with planes flying um, putting out Roundup at a low rate, but that really for us became a big problem because it, uh, the Roundup started killing all the thing, all the weeds, that, all all, the sorry, grasses. all the grasses that were competing with the tussock, and so that then allowed the tussock to start to germinate, and that caused more tussock problems for us. The amount of money that we're doing as a band-aid situation was becoming expensive, expensive and we weren't gaining anything by uh, spraying, spraying, spraying. So it became obvious that I had to do something with the rock. While Maxine and Duncan were trying to control serrated tussock, they came under threat of legal action and enforcement procedures. This led them to sit down with members from the Serrated Tussock Working Party and a number of farm business advisors to determine a plan of action to prevent seeds spreading onto neighbouring properties and address the main infestation. We had um, some leading best practice farmers, we had a couple of neighbours, we had an agronomist. It was, there were about 12 people sitting around the table and um, during that meeting Basically, I guess it was almost decided for us, we really had to start selling our sheep so that we could do more cropping and we probably had to go into debt in a huge way to start getting rid of some of this rock because flying planes over it just wasn't working. And um, so at the meeting it was decided that we sell quite a number of our sheep flocks that we also would start bringing in some share farmers to crop the areas that we could get to already. Um, we adjusted cattle in the, uh, around Seymour because we didn't have enough paddocks of feed left if we started cropping in this way. Um, and the other thing that we did was we really started clearing rock in earnest. Part of the management plan was to clear paddocks of rock and convert to cropping as a means of controlling the serrated tussock. This meant taking paddocks out of pasture and reducing stock numbers. The hardest thing that I had to deal with is to sell the sheep so they uh, reduced by half in numbers so we could actually work on the ground at the same time and still keep sheep as a form of income. That was the hardest thing for me to get over at the time. It was a challenging time for me and that's when really the nuts and the bolts of the whole situation started to come. I started to go from just sheep and then we moved into cropping. So it was a very interesting time. After a while I found that we could do without the share farmers, we could do it ourselves. We've got about 6,000 sheep and we put in 1,200 hectares of crop a year. We've got cattle and we've also got the pigs out the back with Otway pork which they lease land from us that gives us a cash flow coming in without any expense every year. 